All right, we're back here on the GSMC Baseball Podcast, bringing you our third segment, which is going to be about Adam Duvall heading to back, I should say, to the Atlanta Braves. Um, so this is something I didn't really have on my radar um, at this point in the offseason. Um, I didn't think the Braves would be adding much else. Um, you know, Alex, Anth- Alex Anthopoulos said a while ago that the only position player they really tried for, they got, and that was Jared Kelenic. So... I kind of didn't think there would be any more moves. I thought there could potentially be another pitching move. Um, you know, they, I, I've said it a few times that I still think they need pitching, and I think a lot of their fans agree. Um, so I think there could have been another move on the horizon there. Um, but obviously it wasn't, and they're instead adding an outfielder, a guy they know really well, obviously, an Adam Duvall guy, who I believe this will be his third uh, stint with the team, separate stint as well. So, um, yeah, definitely... Uh, Definitely an interesting signing. Um, at the start of the offseason, I did p- predict Duvall to go to the Braves. Obviously, I wasn't on this podcast then, so uh, I don't have any proof of that, but I promise you I did. Um, so, uh, yeah, I think it always made sense in that way because the Brewers have always had their eye on Duvall. Um, Braves, sorry, not Brewers. Um, and um, the thing is that he's obviously been a player they've liked considering they've acquired him and required him a few times now. And... He made sense with them needing some outfield help, specifically left field help. I kind of thought that was over with once they acquired Kellenic, who they said would be a starter. So, um, yeah, it was interesting. Um, obviously, what we know about the Braves the past few years is that we know nothing about the Braves in reality. Um, they always keep everything real close to the chest. Never any leaks from that organization. Ever. Ever at all. Never no leaks. Never any leaks, I should say. Sorry. Um, so... It was a surprise that Duval went back to the Braves, but again, it really wasn't because we don't know anything about the Braves organization. I mean, they traded for Chris Sale without a peep, and that, that you know that's a huge trade. So um, what we know about the deal right now is that it is one year, $3 million. Seems fair to me. And that the interesting part of it is that he will be platooning with Jared Kelenic. Now, that is really surprising to me, as I kind of thought Kelenic would be a full-time starter for them. Um, I think I thought that was the reason they acquired him, that they thought he still had something left in the tank and that they wanted to uh, see what he had there because, you know, obviously Kalanick is a former top prospect, um, real top, like a top 20 prospect with the Mets, with the Mariners, and just didn't work out. So I, I thought they would um, be, be, have, be giving him a full starting role, but apparently not. Um, I assume Duvall will be hitting against lefties as Duvall's a righty, Kalanick's a lefty. Um, so... Duval over the past few years um, against lefties has been has been okay to say the least. Um, it's been really up and down. Uh, 2023 with the Red Sox, 91 WRC plus, um, which is nine nine points nine below average. Obviously with WRC plus, 100 is average. So if you're 100 is league average no matter what. So if you're below 100, um, it's not good. Let's just say it. it's not average. Um, but after that, before that though, 130. After that, 61. Before that, 132. Then 178. Then 67. So I think it's really inconsistent with Duval, And I think the Braves are maybe banking on him being back in Atlanta. Um, kind of getting that consistency up again um, to uh, to hit lefties. Um, he has a righty, so I think you have the matchup there as well. But I think it's really interesting that they don't really, they don't even trust Kalanick enough to give him a full-time starting role. Um, and they're platooning with Duval. Um, so yeah, that's, uh, that's interesting for me. Um, the impact on the Braves for this deal, um, again, I don't think it's much. I just think it's a nice addition to your, uh, lineup. Um, I think the Braves have already had a deep team. I mean, this lineup was insane already. I mean, Sean Murphy, Matt Olson, Ozzy Albies, Orlando Arcia, um, Alston Riley, Ronald Acuna Jr., Michael Harris, like, you know, now you have Jared Kalanick. And uh, Adam Duvall platooning. You also have Marcelo Zuna, DH, of course, as well. So I think they already had a deep lineup, um, already some guys that could uh, be fighting for that fourth, out- fourth outfield spot, like a Forest Wall maybe who's had a nice ring for them. But obviously they disagreed, and um, you know they made Duvall a priority apparently and uh, signed him for a one-year $3 million contract. So uh, yeah, again, just adding more depth to that lineup. Um, I, re- I think that really only the, uh, the real... Uh, weak spot of that lineup right now is shortstop in Orlando Arcia, but um, I think they they could you know get um, some guys at the deadline to uh, potentially uh, 
improve that. Um, also, maybe even catchers kind of a uh, kind of a weak spot as well, potentially with Sean Murphy kind of fading out in the second half of the year last year. Um, so that was a. Uh, that was another thing you have to look at with this Braves team. But again, I think the Duval addition is good. Um, I, I like it a lot. Um, I think it just brings some more depth, um, just more oomph to that lineup. I, I didn't trust Kellenek to be in a full-time starting role, and obviously they, di they didn't as well. So, um, yeah, I mean, definitely uh, definitely interesting that no team even trade, even uh Trust Jared Kalanick. Sorry about the uh, mix-up of the words there. No team really even trusts Jared Kalanick. And they traded for him in a big trade. They said he was the one guy they um, wanted to get this offseason for a position player standpoint. And then they get a guy to basically replace him against lefties. So, And a guy who's not even known for being against lefties, just known as being a good player. Not really known as a big platoon guy. So, uh, yeah, I think it's a good move for the Braves, though. Again, just getting more depth in that lineup. Duvall has versatility as well. If you need him to uh, play other positions, he can. So, uh, yeah, definitely uh, definitely something to uh, see how it progresses. And, um, yeah, definitely, a, uh, I think, a nice move for the Braves. Kind of low risk. And uh, another move I like for them. Um, Braves outlook here, just a little bit about their team. I mean, I don't know what else to say about them. They're easily the, the um, top two team in the NL. Um, I don't think anyone's debating that. It's them and the Dodgers. It has been for a while. Of course, they need to get it done in the reg in the postseason now, after being a great regular season for three straight years. But, you know, 2021, they obviously won the World Series. 2022, 2023, they got embarrassed in the playoffs. Uh, 2020, they also got embarrassed in the playoffs. So you, you can potentially look at 2021 as a fluke. I mean, it's a pretty great fluke considering they won the World Series um, and beat a dynasty in the Astros. So, uh yeah, but they definitely need to get it done in the playoffs, um, even though they are going to be great. They're going to be, you know, what I should say is they're going to be a great team in the regular season. That's not up for debate. I mean, everyone knows they're going to be a great team in the regular season. Um, but the problem is now they have to get it done in the playoffs. They have to get it done when it matters. And that's what you have to really have to look for if you're a Braves fan. Um, you know, does the, uh, does the regular season really mean a lot to the Braves? Yes and no. Yes, because they want to get one or two seeds so they don't have to play in the first round but also no because you know they're gonna make the playoffs anyways and you know that they're gonna have a great team but it doesn't matter because they haven't performed well in the playoffs the past few years and i think just just winning in the playoffs is all that matters um i think it's been their pitching that's really let them down so nothing that uh do a duval signing can particularly fix i mean um reynaldo lopez chris sale good additions but are they really gonna um put you past that echelon of beating teams in the playoffs with your pitching. Um, so definitely something to uh, watch here if you're a Bryce fan. Um, how much does the Duval edition help them? And not only, you know, going off of that, but also how does um, their pitching play this year in the regular season and then seeing that in the playoffs and how is that going to affect them? So definitely, uh, definitely something to watch here and uh, to uh, see what happens with the uh, – with the Braves and uh, how their team performs overall. Now, another part of this Duval deal I want to talk about, um, not uh, Atlanta part, um, was that how does this affect the other teams that need free agents, not need outfielders, and how does this affect the outfielder free agents because those tie in together, of course. Um, so I think you first have a look at the team I've mentioned so much with free agent outfielders, and that is, of course, the Padres, who have I mean, they're in the news for other reasons today, believe me. But uh, I think you still have to look at it this way. I mean, right now, if they're starting left fielders, probably, you know, Jerickson Profar, who's fine. But is he really who you want to start if you're trying to win the season? I mean, you acquired Z, so you're obviously trying to win. So um, I definitely think they could use an upgraded outfield. And I think Duval is a guy I definitely looked at as that. I think Tommy Pham now is a guy you have to look for, a guy you know well, of course, being he played for your team for a few years. I think he might be more of a full-time DH because his fielding has kind of kind of regressed as he's gotten older. That's kind of kind of normal. I mean, he's he's an older guy. Um, not much of a surprise that he is going to uh, regress in fielding and regress overall because he is older. Um, but obviously you have a history with him. You know about him. You know how to deal with him. Um 
he has a history with the fan base, that might be something challenging to uh, work out. But I still think that Tommy Pham to the Padres is definitely something that we can look for right now and definitely something that is possible. Um, so I think looking at that, I mean, looking at that way as well, Michael A. Taylor as well, something, someone that could be, uh, you know, fit with the Padres. And other than that, I think we have to look at other free agent teams that might need an outfielder. You know, I think they might be more willing to pay Pham and Taylor because Duvall came off the market. They have less options now. You know, I think of teams potentially like the Mariners who may need another outfielder, you know, someone of the short-term variety um, who can uh, who can be a good uh, player for them. Um, I mean, I think of a few other teams as well. I mean, all teams really need more depth in, in their lineups. Some outfielders, I think the Rangers could use someone maybe um, as a po- that's a possibility that they could uh, they could get someone as well. Um, I mean, other you know, there's a lot of other teams that could use uh, players here. So um, I think Duvall and uh, Michael A. Taylor, those are guys to watch now that Duvall has signed, see where they potentially could go. Um, and uh, yeah, definitely, uh, definitely something to uh, to see here that how will this Duvall signing. Um, affect the free agent outfielders, what their choices are, where they could go. Will teams be more committed to uh, giving them the deals they want and uh, kind of going for it? So, uh, yeah, definitely uh, definitely a storyline to watch here and something I want to uh, see as it goes on. But overall, I like this move for the Braves. Um, I think it's an interesting fit, but Duvall's a good player, and the Braves know what they're doing. And I think Hellenic had some question marks, and uh, you're kind of answering those questions now with platooning him. So uh, overall, I think it's a uh, good move by the uh, Padres. I mean, by the Braves, sorry. Yeah, too, too much news about the Padres. Talking about them too much. Um, so yeah, that was our third segment here. We're going to move on to our fourth segment, which is what I usually do. News around the league. Um, what's going on around the league? Um, some storylines that I want to talk about. So uh, yeah, that's what I'm going to uh, talk about here. And uh, we'll uh, see you after the break and uh, talk about it. Thanks.